Hello, today we're going to talk about the eviction process, the timeline. Let me throw up our Utah Apartment Association of Utah eviction process overview flowchart, and let's go through the timelines here. Now, landlords post a three-day notice to begin the eviction process. We haven't really begun the process because that is an opportunity to cure that gives the tenant an opportunity to fix it or move. But if they don't, then we begin the eviction process. So first step, post the notice or serve the notice. Second step, the tenant does not pay or comply within the three days. Now, how do we count the three days? Calendar days. So if you serve it on a Friday, we never count the day we served it. You'd count Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, even if Monday was a holiday. And if they're not out at Monday at midnight, we could go to the next step. Now, we have a whole video talking about the advantages of using an attorney or not using an attorney, the pros and cons. But we're going to just go through this one as if you chose to use an attorney and save the time. So with an attorney, you go to the top box there. At uh, about 9 in the morning, you fax over four things. And let's put a list of the four things that you fax over. Number one, the three-day notice. Number two, the lease or the rental agreement that you're basing this on. Number three, the application, which has the Social Security number, where they work, all of their personal information that can be used in the collection process. And number four, generally we uh, also give our attorney a ledger so they can see how much they've been billed versus how much they've been paid. The ledger is just the record of payments. So at 9 o'clock they receive that. By 9.30 they will have electronically filed the eviction. Uh, evictions are filed electronically in Utah. By 10 o'clock there will be a packet of papers including the lawsuit and the summons um, in the outbox for their constable or a private investigator or whoever serves it to, to go serve. And then follow the arrow over to the next box. Once it's served, and many uh, private investigators and constables guarantee for attorneys that give them so much business that they'll serve this quickly, usually about 24 hours. So let's say Tuesday afternoon this gets served. The tenant has three court days to respond. Now, how do we count court days? Well, obviously, we never count the day we served it, but we count the next day. Um, and uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday after that, uh, Monday morning, if they haven't responded, we go straight down. If a tenant fails to respond, immediate restitution is granted. The constable or sheriff enforces the order of restitution. The locks are changed, and the tenant is removed from the premises. Uh, we have a whole video talking about the lockout, so we won't cover that now. Now, what if they do respond? So one time I sued a tenant who owed me money. Um, they sent a nice letter to the judge saying, Your Honor, uh, we agree that we owe this money, but here's the thing. Our life's so hard, we just don't think we should have to pay right now. So even as ridiculous as that sounds, that is a response. And under Utah law, they get a hearing within 10 days. So let's go through this. The tenant responds, files an answer with the court. Uh, it is filed with the court. A hearing is set within 10 days on pay or vacate and criminal nuisance only. If it's a comply or vacate, uh, it might be a little bit longer before you get a hearing. Uh, now, what happens, you go to the, the hearing, and we have a whole video that talks about the hearing, but let's, uh, let's uh, assume you prevail, and the court issues a judgment and restitution. Now, those, those two different pieces of paper, uh, the judgment and restitution, have totally different purposes. Let's talk first about the judgment. That's monetary damages. That says so-and-so owes you $5,000 in monetary damages. That's something your attorney or your collection agency can use to collect garnished wages, garnished bank accounts. It may take years, but get that judgment on their record so the next landlord knows what kind of tenant they're dealing with. And get it on there so that to all of their future creditors know that they don't pay their bills. And sometimes you'd be surprised that they make the tenant pay you off before they do business with them. Uh, the order of restitution is different. That gives you the premises back. That basically says that lease, which granted a leasehold interest to the tenant, is now terminated and the tenant relinquishes the leasehold interest or control of the property and control of the property goes back to the landlord. So those are those things. Now, this is uh, the, in most cases we don't use a bond, but let's go back to the flow chart. In the old days, we used to file a bond to accelerate the process. There are some cases where you still might, uh, very few, but a tenant must file a counter bond. So what a bond is, is you say, your honor, um, we're gonna put 
a bond down and the court usually sets it at three times rent. So you put $3,000 down. Then the tenant has to match you. It's kind of like anteing up in a poker game. In order to stay in the process, stay in the property, they have to put the money down, which is pretty hard for them to do if they haven't paid rent. Um, but uh, it does facilitate the process a little faster. So oh, that's the Utah eviction process overview. We have separate videos on the hearing. We have separate videos on serving notice. We have separate videos on the lockout. Hope you'll watch those if you have any questions and uh, have a nice day.